Hi there, welcome. I'm Nikki. This is Pin Cut Sew, and I have a very interesting topic to talk to you about today, and that is finishing things. If you find yourself with a giant work in progress pile, or a closet full of unquilted quilt tops, or a mending basket full of mending projects, this is the video for you, especially if it's frustrating to you that you can't seem to finish anything. Maybe you really enjoy having a closet full of unfinished things. If that's you, I hope you'll still watch because I bet that it's weighing on you even if you don't think that it is. So these are all my tips for becoming a finisher. Let's get right into it. So this video idea was spawned by something I just saw on Instagram. It's a reel that's come up a couple of times, so maybe it's viral and you've seen it too. But a woman started a crochet or knitted afghan when her son was being born. And she just finished it and her son is now 36. <laughs> so she had this work in progress going for 36 years, y'all. That is a little crazy. I mean, if you have projects around your house that you've had for 36 years, no judgment here, but also I am just, I am not that person. Having that many projects around would just make me feel so weighted down and guilty over them, you know? So we're gonna address the guilt today for sure. But my very first tip for finishing things is that you don't actually have to finish something if you don't want to. So the first step for finishing things is to go through the unfinished projects you have and deciding whether or not you're into it enough to finish it. Maybe you started a long time ago and you don't even like it anymore. Maybe it wouldn't even fit anymore if you finished it, if it's clothing. Maybe it's no longer your style. Maybe you just didn't like how it was turning out. So if that's the case, you don't have to finish those things. Here is permission to quit. <laughs> so the first step for sure, if you have a lot of unfinished projects laying around, is to go through them and decide not to finish some. And before you think about how wasteful that would be to not finish them because you spent time and money on them, I have some things to say about that too. So if you don't want to waste all the time you spent on the thing, you can be encouraged because nothing that we spend time on is truly wasted. Either you spent time learning, maybe you spent that time by yourself with your earbuds on and a valuable podcast that you really liked. That was not time wasted. Maybe you learned some new skills. Maybe you even just learned something about yourself and your style and what you like and don't like or what you enjoy doing or don't enjoy doing. So don't worry too much about the time. If you decide to quit something, but you already spent a lot of time on it, just let it go. You still learned. The time was still well spent. It's not like you were doom scrolling on Twitter or whatever. Now, feeling like you're wasting money though, getting rid of sewing projects is kind of harder because it's money, it's tangible. So if you feel like that, something my husband tells me when I make a financial mistake, like for example, if I forgot to cancel a subscription before the trial period ended, or I don't understand what should not be flushed down our septic system and it's completely my fault that we had to call a plumber. My husband calls it a learning tax and he's, yes, my husband is a very forgiving and understanding person. I am very grateful for that. Most people would call it a stupid tax, but he reframes that into a learning tax. I did learn about my septic system, didn't I? I did learn that maybe I can't sign up for free trials because I will likely forget. Or maybe I will learn to set an alarm for myself to cancel them, but that's probably not going to happen. So really, I shouldn't sign up for them at all. And you are you don't have to just throw the project in the trash. I agree that that would be, that would definitely feel like I'm throwing money away. But you can think of other things to do. So you can offer it to a friend who sews if they really want it. Don't just offer it to them with the expectation that they will finish it the way that you would have finished it or that they even want it because really that's just pushing your dilemma off onto someone else. And you don't want to do that. So you can also offer it up to the sewing Facebook groups, the Quilt Guild in your area, or other sewing groups that would be happy to either finish it or take the fabric and make something else. So if you offer it up for free to someone, then you can feel like it's still going to be utilized and you did not waste all that money. And if your project is like a quilt or something, you can even donate it to the thrift store. If I saw a already made quilt top in the thrift store, I would totally buy that if I liked it and finish it. Clothing projects, though, are a little bit harder. So most people, I mean, thrift stores probably wouldn't even put an, un, an unsewn clothing project on the shelf. But you can always go through your mending basket or your works in progress and decide if you're not going to finish making a garment, then you can just cut it up, get what yardage you can out of it, and fold it, put it back into your drawer if you still like the fabric. Otherwise, you can donate it as fabric. So just cut it into usable pieces. 
and reintroduce it either to your fabric stash or donate it with other fabric scraps. So another option to do with the things that you don't like, you don't want to finish them how they are, is to try to think about something new you could make with it. So maybe you have a quilt that you just aren't really liking as an entire quilt anymore, but the blocks are cool and you could cut them up and make pouches out of them for Christmas gifts this year. Or if you have a stack of quilt blocks made that you don't ever see yourself making a ton more of to make a whole quilt, you could make each block into a pot holder or something. So there's a lot more things you can do. You could even take a quilt that you've made that you don't like, that you don't feel like putting the binding on and make it into a coat. Those are super popular right now. And like I said, if you're working on clothing or anything else, any other sewing projects that you're just not in love with anymore, use the fabric and make it into something else. Don't just keep it in your stash because it's gonna languish there for years. You're probably never gonna mend it or finish it or repair it if you don't really love it. So either you love the fabric enough to keep it and make something else, or you don't like the fabric and you should just donate it. By the way, I have a whole video about tips for keeping your sewing room cleaned out, so I'm gonna link to that one if you wanna watch that one too, because that one I feel like really goes hand in hand with this one. I think that people really get bogged down in their mind by the guilt weighing on them of keeping things and keeping unfinished projects and keeping too many supplies that they're not using, and then they just feel guilty for adding anything else and they just feel like they should be doing something that they don't want to do and really that is just self-imposed guilt so learn from this don't keep buying fabric don't keep starting projects until you clear out some of the old ones you'll feel so much better another thing you can do with these unfinished projects because maybe you started something a long time ago and now it's not really your style anymore but you have a friend or loved one in mind who it is their style so you can finish it for them you could, if you have enough works in progress lying around, you could sew all of your Christmas gifts for this year out of your unfinished sewing projects. Okay, but now let's talk about the things you do want to finish. How to methodically finish the works in progress that you still like and they do want to finish, but you got either stuck on a step or you're at the unfun parts of the sewing process and you don't want to continue on. So these are my strategies and tips for how to become a finisher. One thing that really keeps me motivated is to envision that finished product. When I make a quilt or a garment, when it's in its rough stages and not finished, it really doesn't look that great. Like I just made a pair of shorts and would, before you put a waistband on a pair of pants or shorts, they look so dumpy <laughs> that it can be demotivating to even bother finishing. But if you just finish it and you keep in mind how it's going to look because you spent the time on it already, and this especially goes for quilt tops every time I'm working on a quilt, when it's in its completed top stage, like sometimes they look okay, but other times you're like, eh, I don't know about this. But then once you start the quilting process and it gets that cuddly, crinkly, textured look, then you're like, oh yes, quilting is everything <laughs> and quilting, imagine that. So I always try to keep in mind the finished product. So I really want this quilt on my couch in my living room. It's gonna look so cool in there or I really want this pair of shorts in my closet because it's a hole that I have in my closet. I really want to finish this or I really want my friend to have this bag that she loved so much that I made for myself and now she wants one. So that can help you get past that hurdle if you keep the end product in mind. My husband and I right now are renovating our 1950s mid-century house. This house needed a lot of work. <laughs> Two things started to happen. One, my husband would get bogged down in the boring parts of whatever project he was working on and he would start a new project and then the old project would just kind of be languishing and getting barely worked on like one small piece at a time and then he had too many projects started so then he was overwhelmed we were both overwhelmed so we just started to take a one wall at a time approach to the problem and then we could finish one side of a room completely like outlet covers everything and then we started to feel like we were making real progress and so if you can envision what it's going to look like, I have this clear vision in my mind of what this house can be. And that is really what's keeping us going at this point because it can be a real slog. If you've ever renovated a house, I know you understand. So another thing that helps keep me going is to break the project, project down into smaller steps. So if something is really a slog, like if you need to finish something and you're not really into it, or maybe you promised it to somebody, but you don't really want to do it. Maybe you're getting paid for it and it's just not something you enjoy sewing. Try working on it just a little bit each day. And then once you near the end, then it's exciting enough to just be done with it that you'll want to continue. So I am refinishing right now. We built some, we didn't build them. They were originally built in record player shelves with speakers. There was room for a record player. There's an outlet in there, room for vinyl. We are big vinyl people. We love our vinyl collection and we actually listen to it all the time. 
But right now, while I'm working on it, we kind of redid it into our own style of record cabinet. And my job is to do the drywall mudding. And this process is a pain in the rear. It's so slow, it has to dry constantly. You have to sand the heck out of it so it's filthy. But just 30 minutes a day, and now I'm so close to being done that now I just want to knock the rest of it out. So I've been working on it every day, more than my 30 minute goal. So that can be really motivating once you get near the end to just knock it out and be done and move on. I have seen people who have closet full of unfinished quilt tops. And sometimes when you get to that point in a sewing project where the fun part is kind of done, you really have to find your motivation to continue and to finish. Put some rules for yourself in place so that you can start finishing things and you'll feel so good about it. I have certain rules for my sewing room. One of them is that I have a certain amount of fabric storage space and pattern storage space and when it's full, I either use it or I clean it out. I don't just add more storage because then I would have an out of control stash and I hate that feeling and I also don't like shoving drawers closed. I really like it to be manageable amount. So that's a rule that I have for myself. If you get shiny object syndrome and you find yourself wanting to start a new project before you finish the current project, maybe a rule for yourself could be I cannot start another project until I finish one or two or three projects that I already have going. Or I will not buy more fabric until I finish a, pro a project. If Buying fabric is something you love to do, then you might be motivated enough to finish your project. Another rule could be I have one basket for mending and current projects that I put aside, like clothing projects. When that basket is full, I have to go through it. I can't just pile on to the basket. Most of the time when I go through it, a lot of it I've lost interest in or doesn't fit or fit my style anymore anyway, so I can do away with that in whatever way I see fit. The rest of it I am reminded is even in there because I forgot about it altogether and I'm really excited to finish it. So if you only have one place and refuse to add more to it, just like my fabric stash, then you're kind of forced to go through it pretty often. So these kinds of rules are all about the reward you get for your effort. If it's motivating enough for you to envision that finished project, like this quilt that goes on my couch I'm very excited to have because it's going to make the room look really cool or whatever, then that's pretty motivational to me, if you can keep that in mind. But if it's not very motivational to you, try to find what does motivate you. It might be another person. You can share your rules with another person and they can kind of hold you to it. Playfully, of course. You don't want this to be burdensome because this is a hobby. Remember, it's fun. <laughs> um, another thing can be if you're trying to knock something out, you can say, oh, after this, after I finish, if I work on this today, I'm going to have ice cream after dinner <laughs> or something like that. So give yourself a little bit of a reward, but you need to find what motivates you to finish things. Okay, one very helpful thing when working on any project actually that you need to finish is to try to determine why you got stuck. Why did you stop working on it? Did you come to a step that was a barrier to you? Did you not understand the step? Did you not have the right color thread? Did you Do you not have enough floor space to lay out whatever quilt you were making? Um, what was the barrier? Why did you stop? Is it just a simple step like you don't like to put on a binding and so you just don't do it? If you really think about the binding process, it probably takes 30 minutes. You can do it by machine instead. If you hate that part, you just don't want to do the hand sewing. If you need table space or floor space, maybe you have five quilt tops you need to make into quilt sandwiches. Get your supplies. Clear off the table or the floor and just do them all at once. Get past the hump. Maybe you just didn't have the right thread so you shoved it in your to-be-worked-on pile and got to work on something else. Just get on Amazon and order the right color thread real quick. And then it will be here in a day or two and you can finish. So try to determine what the barrier is or maybe you just don't like it. Maybe you thought you would enjoy sewing all the curtains for your house and you hate it and you don't want to do it. Just go buy yourself some curtains, okay? Here's your liberating permission. And if you pull it out and you want to finish it and then you get started and you're just not excited about it at all, you can reevaluate it and put it into the do not finish category and then you decide to do something else with it. You don't have to finish it. Remember, you don't have to. I was all ready to make a pair of shorts. In fact, I picked up several pairs of shorts and pants because I really wanted to work on my pants fitting. It's hard for me to buy pants. It's hard for anybody to buy pants that fit, right? Our bodies are just all so different. You know what I don't understand? Here's a side note. Men's clothes come with so many different measurements. A men's shirt can be measured by their neck size, their arm length, their torso length, and their midsection width. And women get small, medium, large. What the heck? So women come in all heights too. So why can't we have more clothes that come in long, short, whatever? But anyway, 
I've been wanting, for this reason, I've been wanting to make some shorts and pants. And my mom had given me a an article about the top-down center outfitting method of pant. And all I had to do was read it. And I have this fabric ready and I have the pattern ready. All I needed to do was read the article. So I was like, what is stopping me from making these shorts? I just need to read the article. It took five minutes. It was instant understanding. I made the shorts and it was super fun. And my shorts fit perfectly. I'll try to link to that method. Mine is from the Threads Magazine article about it, but I know there's videos about it. It was life-changing. I mean, in a sewing kind of way. Okay, so say you have that project that you really have to finish because you promised it to somebody or you actually really do want the end result. You're just not enjoying the process, but you can't buy curtains. You have to make the curtains. Just try to buckle down, put in that podcast, put on some music, realize that things never take quite as long as we think they're going to. You might think you have hours of work left when really you only have 30 minutes. Do you know I can empty the dishwasher and put dishes into it during the three minutes that my waffles toast? It only takes three minutes. I'm always surprised because I feel like it's a 10 minute job to empty the dishwasher, but it only takes a couple minutes. Okay, so things don't always take as long as you think. And once you get going, just like my record player shelves, you'll probably just want to plow through and finish. And then you'll be done and you can take it off of your mind and check it off the list. You can also try to reward yourself. I have a thing of chocolate in my sewing room, Dove Dark Chocolates. I like the dark because I never want more than one. Maybe you could use that as a reward for getting a certain step done. Maybe you did not want to install that zipper. You do not want to attach that binding. Give yourself a chocolate when it's done or whatever it is that motivates you. Okay, we're nearing the end. The biggest takeaway I would love for you to have from this video is to set yourself free from the guilt around having unfinished projects lying around. And by set yourself free, I mean, go through them and get rid of them if you don't want to finish them. People keep things for so many crazy reasons. Ask yourself why you're keeping it. What self-imposed guilt is piling on your mind because you feel bad about time and energy and money wasted on them, okay? Set yourself free. Clean out your work in progress closet. Start fresh. Nobody is judging you for it. And then the second takeaway is to figure out what is stopping you from completing things and how to get past those barriers. Parcel out what the barriers are. Realize they're pre usually pretty small barriers. It's usually just one little step you're avoiding, one clearing off of the table, or one little spool of thread. Usually the barriers are really small. Pick a project, find the barrier, and solve the problem and finish it. I hope this has been helpful for you if you are a finisher or if you are not a finisher, maybe you really like to have unfinished projects around, I would love for you to chime in. I personally move way too often to have anything lying around that's unfinished, plus it just weighs on my mind. But I know not everyone is like that. Maybe some people really like to come back to things years later and finish them. If that's you, chime it in the comments. If you like this video, give it a like. That really helps it be seen by more people, which helps my channel and I would really appreciate it. So I can't wait to talk to you again soon. Bye.